Math 1314, Tyler Junior College, section 2.5, Transformations of Functions. In this final video, we'll discuss the sequence of transformations. If a function has multiple transformations performed on it, then it will perform multiple transformations on the function's graph. But the question is, in what order do we perform them? And believe it or not, it actually makes a difference. So what order do we perform them in? Well, in general, the first thing you do is determine the shape. And the shape is determined by the common or the basic function, or what some people call the parent function. But not just that, any stretching or shrinking. In other words, before we move the graph around and flip it, we want to find the correct shape. And that's dictated by the common function on which the function is based and any stretching that may happen. The second thing you want to do is take care of any reflections. And the last thing you want to do is take care of any shifts. So shape, flip, move. So let's identify everything that's going to happen. Let's start with a plus 2 at the end. A plus 2 at the end of the function will cause a transformation of the graph to go up. So this graph will move up too. What will the plus 1 on the x do? A plus 1 on an x moves it to the left. So this plus 1 will move the graph to the left one. What will multiplying a 3, and you notice I'm covering it the negative just for a moment. Actually, actually, let's deal with the negative. What effect is putting a negative in the front have on the function? Putting a negative in the front invokes a reflection across the x-axis. So reflect across the x-axis. And finally, multiplying in front by a number Multiplying in front by, by a number will either invoke a vertical stretch or a vertical shrink, depending if the number is greater than 1 or less than 1. Now, to be nitpicky, this number is less than 1. Negative 3 is less than 1. But we've already analyzed the negative sign, and we are currently analyzing the number 3. So I guess to be super specific, in these inequalities about stretching, we should put absolute values when comparing the c to 1, just so nobody says, but negative 3 is less than 1. I know, but 3 is greater than 1, so absolute value, if you will. Since 3 is bigger than 1 and we're multiplying in front, that will invoke a vertical stretch. So this invokes a vertical stretch, if I can spell, vertical stretch by a factor of 3. So let's determine the order in which we're going to do these things. Oh, we, we left out something kind of important. What does the square do, or what does it tell us? It tells us that our base shape is the original parabola. So let's list the order in which we'll do these transformations. We have four of them, a reflection, a stretch, and two moves. First, we have to determine the shape in any stretches, so this stretching will occur first. After any stretching, we move to reflections, so the reflection will occur second. And then any shifts, so the shifts collectively will occur third. And we've already talked about combining vertical and horizontal shifts. So let's, you can do all this on one graph, but you can also do it on a sequence of graphs. For example, the original graph has three points of reference that we're going to keep up with. The origin, 0, 0, 1, 1, and negative 1, 1. You're welcome to keep up with more reference points like 2, 4 or negative 2, 4 on this graph. Let's start with the vertical stretch. Remember that a vertical stretch, vertical stretch by 3, a vertical stretch will multiply each y-coordinate 
by the factor, in this case, 3. So I did not space this out very well, so we're going to move this down here. We're going to do the vertical long. Yeah, we'll, we'll make it work. We'll do the vertical stretch here. And we'll resketch it below. So, if I do a vertical stretch by a factor of 3, I need to triple each y coordinate. The origin stays put, but 1 comma 1 becomes 1 comma 3, so it gets 3 times as high as it used to be. And then negative 1 comma 1 gets multiplied to negative 1 comma 3. So if we reconnect those, we'll have a taller, skinnier parabola because it got stretched upwards. So there's the vertical stretch by a factor of 3. That's supposed to say times 3. Okay. What is our second move? Our second move is the reflection. So we need to reflect across the x-axis. And the net result of reflecting across the x-axis is that all of the y-coordinates change signs. So now we're going to reflect across the x-axis. Now keep in mind where all these points are going to land. They're all pretty high. They're all about to get pretty low. So the origin is still sitting there. The origin won't move anywhere upon reflection or stretching. It's only when you shift it that it changes. If we reflect the point 1, 3 across the x-axis, it lands at the point 1, negative 3. 0, 0 is still there. Let's move that a little bit lower. Of course, you can draw this more accurately, especially if you had graph paper that was already lined. And then the point negative 1, 3, when reflected across the x-axis, will reflect down to the point negative 1, comma, negative 3. So connect those dots. For our final graph, I'm going to get rid of this. If you're taking notes and hadn't written this down by now, I don't know what you were waiting for, but you can always back up the video. And what's our final move? Our final move is actually a combination move of a shift to the left one and up two. So now we need to move to the left one and up two. And the easiest way to pull that off is to remember what these do to the x's and the y's. Left one means minus one to the x, and up two means plus two to the y. So let's recalculate each point and plot it. Let's see if I'm gonna go left one and up two. I need a little bit of space over here. Okay. So let's start with the origin. If we, if we move this to the left one and up two, that'll put us at the point negative one comma two. So there's the origin after it moved left one and up two. For the point one comma negative three, to the left one means to subtract one from the x, so its x will become zero. You know what? I thought about doing this earlier, um, and I'm gonna do it now. One trick to succeeding in math besides dropping your markers everywhere is to stay organized. And sometimes in these videos, I just feel like I'm not as organized as I wish I was. We're going to do a before and after on these three ordered pairs. 0, 0, negative 1, negative 3, 1, comma, negative 3. Now for this transfer, translation, the before and after, the after is subtracting 1 from the x and adding 2 to the y. So let's start by subtracting 1 from each x. 0 minus 1 is negative 1. Negative 1 minus 1 is negative 2. 1 minus 1 is 0. And for the up 2, we have to add 2 to the y. So 0 plus 2 is 2. Negative 3 plus 2 is negative 1. Negative 3 plus 2 is negative 1. And now I can just plot all three of these points. Negative 1 comma 2 negative 2 comma negative 1 and 0 comma negative 1. Keep in mind that we just took that parabola and moved it to the left and up. Here it is. And honestly, I could have made a before and after chart for every single move. But sometimes it's easier to look at it visually. Sometimes it's easier to look at it numerically. You find your comfort zone and that's the one that you stick with.